Hello, and welcome to the Elevate Podcast. I'm your host, Patricia Nowakowski. I am a salon owner, educator, mindset, and leadership coach that helps salon owners go from overwhelmed and burnt out to motivated and empowered. It is my mission to help you systemize your business, generate more profit, and create a career that you are absolutely in love with. Join us every week to learn about the small shifts you can make to elevate your business regarding mindset, marketing, social media, business systems, and so much more. Welcome to this week's episode of the Elevate Podcast. On today's episode, I am so very excited to finally have my stylist, Melanie Gorman, on today's show. We're going to chat all things employment, all things, you know, stylist perspective. We're going to be talking about affiliate links. We're going to be talking about the reasons why she likes working in our salon. And it's a great opportunity to get a stylist perspective of why they decide to stay long term as a commission employee. Melanie has been with me for over five years as a commission stylist. She focuses on extension services, and she is also one of our mentors inside of the salon who helps guide our newer stylists through our training program and helps mentor them into success inside of our salon. So I'm so excited today to chat with Melanie, and hopefully from the salon owner perspective and stylist perspective, you can take away some really good nuggets from today's show. Melanie, welcome to today's episode. Take a moment to introduce yourself and kind of give a little backstory of who you are and how we know each other. I'm Melanie. I worked for Patricia for going on six years now. I was her one-on-one personal assistant for about one to two years when I first started when I was 18. And then I kind of grew as a stylist throughout the years for her salon. I also shared with everybody that you are a salon mentor inside of our salon. Kind of give a little bit of insight of what that looks like for you and how that kind of is incorporated into our day-to-day at our salon. So I've been a mentor for about a year. So what that looks like, we have about anywhere from like two to even like six girls on our team that I'll help throughout the day at the salon. If like Patty's not there, just someone for them to come to if they need help with a service. And I also kind of coach them even outside of the salon, just like to motivate them to grow their business. I really wanted to chat with you today because you've been with me for so long and I feel like we have such a great working relationship and we've experienced so much growth together. You've gone through so many changes with me inside of my business. So I really just wanted to break it down for our audience. One, I wanted to chat with you about affiliate links because you've been with me. I've never carried retail when you've been with me or have we carried retail? So I think I got like a view of it. I I don't think I was on the floor when we carried it, but I was Mm -hmm. assisting you. So I got to see that part. But for me personally, I didn't get to experience that until now. If you've been feeling overwhelmed and overworked from owning your salon, you're not alone. If you're like many salon owners, you wanted to build a salon that makes you feel fulfilled, passionate, and something that brings you freedom and flexibility into your life. But you ended up being exhausted from taking on all your business tasks alone. It doesn't have to be this way. It's time for change. The Elevated Salon Owner Collective will help you do just that. You'll automate your salon, implement solid business systems, transform your salon culture, and take charge of your online presence to regain freedom back into your business. I'd love for you to experience the freedom and fulfillment that you desired when you decided to create your business. To learn more, visit opulentbeautypro.com backslash elevate or click the link in the show notes. So I want to talk about that first. So we allow all of our stylists inside of the salon to have affiliate links. And affiliate links essentially are a way for the stylist to make direct commission from their product sales. It goes directly to their bank accounts. And I really liked this idea because I thought it was another opportunity for our our stylists inside of the salon to have another stream of revenue. 
But what I've come to find out since like really talking and deep diving into this topic with my stylist and with you, Melanie, was that the affiliate links um, in theory were really, really good, but like they're not very effective. So I know and one of the reasons that prompted me to really kind of like get this podcast done this week is you really put a ton of effort into your affiliate links. And I also want to state that Melanie is our top earner inside of the salon. So she does everything right. She's, I mean, I looked at your schedule because I was trying to schedule my own appointment for my hair and I was like, oh my God, she's so booked. So you really, you're really booked and you have a really great connection with all of your clients. So I want you to talk about one, talk about the effort you actually put into your affiliate links when you were trying, because I know you've since stopped because you really weren't seeing great results and you tried for a while. And then tell me how you like affiliate links compared to actually having retail in the salon and selling retail in the salon, because we've recently brought retail back. Yeah. So I think the idea of the affiliate link was great. I mean, obviously, like the stylist can make more money. And like when people were shopping through me, I really liked it, but it wasn't consistent. I think I would probably make like when I was really pushing it, like $50 a month, like at most. And I feel like I was really advertising and really pushing. Um, But I just feel like clients like either want to like have it in their hand, like at their appointment, or they're just going to go look at like Amazon or like wherever, like when they think about it at home, like they're not going to remember to go to your link and then shop through you like when they get home. So I think that was kind of hard. The idea of it is great, like I said, because the stylist can make more money and it goes directly into your bank account. But like I said, I feel like people like either want to buy it like as they're in your share or like they'll just go on Amazon. That's what I was getting from it. And I feel like I would try to push like them shopping on my link when they were in my share. And I just kind of felt like I was like money hungry and like just it was a really awkward conversation rather than having the conversation with having retail in our salon. You did live videos, right? Yeah, I can touch base on that too. So then I felt awkward, like trying to redirect my clients, like say like we were talking about Kevin Murphy, that's like the huge one in our salon. So then I would see them going on like Amazon on their phone. Then I'm like, okay, like you can shop through my link. And I just felt like it was a really awkward conversation for whatever reason, whenever I would try to redirect them and they still wouldn't really shop through it. So then I'm like, that didn't work. Let's try something else. So I would do a live video and then link the product. I would do like a product of the week, like every single week for like a month or two. And no one shopped through that. So I'm like, okay, like in person isn't working. And then being on social media isn't working. So I don't know. I just feel like because Amazon and other things are so big, which I hate, I just feel like that doesn't really work. And one other thing you said you did too, was you said that you actually were emailing your clients too. So you did some like email marketing with it and still did not find success with that. Yeah. I just feel like the affiliate links, like I like how it's set up um, because once you actually are on the website, it's easy, but I would try to put links and things. And I think it just, it, I don't think you can even post the link in your story because I know that's pretty effective for other websites and like other influencers or stylists with other things. I don't think you can do that because I feel like my clients aren't really checking their email. If it's not like for their appointment, if it's just for like other promotions we're doing and stuff like that. So yeah. I feel like the way that the affiliate link was set up, like you can't really like market properly with it or effectively, I should say. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things I like about you is like you're a critical thinker. So it's like you test things and then you try something different and then you test that and then you try something different. So you really did give it a really good go because we chatted about it when we were together in the salon. And the reason why I wanted to touch base with all of my like stylists is when we first started the affiliate links, which I think was like closer to like 2020 when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And I think there was such a like huge support from our clientele to like really support our business, which I am forever grateful for. I think that's so amazing that so many people bought from our links. But what I had found is a lot of our sales had slowly been declining, I would say over like the last year and a half, two years. So I would say it was really strong for 2020, 2021. And moving into 2022, 2023 is when I saw the salon decline. So I would say for our salon, we were averaging and we still average about $25, 25 to $50 a week from our affiliate links. So in my mind, I was thinking, 
as the salon owner that clients were then directly purchasing from you. So when I chatted with you the other day and was like, hey, how are you doing with your affiliate links? And you're like, oh, I'm not doing well at all. I was like, oh, I assumed that since the clients weren't purchasing directly from the salon that they were purchasing from Mm -hmm. you and come to find out after our conversation, they're not. And then that prompted me to talk to all of the stylists. And I found out that some of the stylists aren't even using the links and that a lot of them aren't successful as well, which is kind of like what prompted me to actually dive into our numbers. So, okay, moving on from affiliate links five months ago, we decided to create and bring in our own product line, which was so exciting for the team. I think from the team aspect, it was so fun to get you involved to like test the products and name the products and then to actually bring the products in. From the stylist standpoint, can you kind of like share what that experience was like for you and then go into like how you like having products in the salon again? Yeah, I love it. I mean, I know that um, like number wise, affiliate links would benefit me more. But for me, like I think it's probably like monthly, probably like a $10 difference because again, like the affiliate links weren't working for me. I just think it's a way to market yourself more as a stylist when you have your own like branded products. I talk about products all the time on my social media. And then again, like my extension clients are like excited to shop through us and like they're getting the proper products for their hair. So I feel like it really just works. I mean, number wise, obviously affiliate links are like better for stylists, but like for me, like they just don't work. So I think it's just another thing to have in the salon to like up level like your services. So I think having the products in the salon a hundred percent is better. Yeah, because your commission for the affiliate links is 25%. And -hmm. in the salon, it starts at 15, but with extensions, it can go up to all the way up to 30. Okay. So when we were actually creating the products, explain like the excitement around that because we brought the products and we tested them. What was that like for you? So I like that we could actually test because then we could see what we liked and what we didn't like anywhere from like consistency, smell and like actual usage. So I think that was really cool because with like other product lines, you don't get to do that. You just get them and then you kind of like just pick which ones you like and dislike. So I think it was really nice that we were able to see like everything before we got to pick what we wanted. So after I did my numbers too, I did a comparison and we make, I think it was like in profit was like 4.6 times more with having retail in the salon, (laughs) which is not that much because our affiliate links, I think when we were looking at the affiliate link profit for the salon, it was like $500 over a five month period. And then for the products, it was four times more, 4.6 times more. So I think too, like the opportunity to have that commission on your check every week is really nice. And I don't really feel like the stylists are pushing products, which is not something I want anyway. I feel like the products are just kind of selling themselves. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think they 100% are. Like, I don't like to push things on my clients. I always like tell everyone I'd be a terrible salesperson because I'm always like, do this, it's cheaper. But my clients are like, oh, that smelled good. Like, I guess I'll get it. Like, I don't know what it's for, but like, they just like want to shop with us. And I even have like clients that I see like once a year follow us on social media and they're like, oh, I'm going to get all these products for like my family for Christmas. So like, let me know like a time I can come in and shop with you guys. Like, I just think like, it's a really good opportunity to have them in the salon. And I was even thinking about this earlier today. If I'm at like a med spa or like anywhere like that, I'm more, I wouldn't say pressured, but I'm more willing to buy products when it's in front of me rather than like going home and shopping. Like, I don't think I would ever shop through like another like salon or spa unless it was like right in front of me. Yeah, I actually did a poll on my Instagram and I polled our clients through my personal Instagram and 75% of our clientele or just clients in general would prefer to buy in the salon the same day in opposed to 25% said that they would prefer links. So 75% of clients would prefer to purchase from the salon same day of appointments, which I think is a really high number. I honestly thought that that number would have been like, not as divided. Yeah. 75% of people prefer to buy in the salon, which I was really surprised about. Okay. So I want to go and talk about why do you choose to work at my salon for so long? Like what about my salon keeps you staying here and keeps you motivated and fulfilled? So I think right now in like my life and career, I personally, like from the start, I never really wanted my own commission salon. I always had the idea, like maybe down the line, like I would 
do like a rental suite but like for me it's like commission with the rental vibe which I think is like the dream for like all stylists kind of so like my thing always is like I want to work in a commission salon because I feel like it keeps me motivated I feel like we always bounce ideas off of each other and then I have the stylist freedom to go do side work like I, right now I'm in like my bridal part of my life I guess I feel like this whole year I've like worked with like another stylist like her company and then I do like side work on the weekend so I feel like it's kind of perfect for me I don't have like the stress of like only a salon or suite but I still kind of like do side work on my own so it's kind of like a nice balance for me I say and I feel like a lot of commission salons don't allow you to do that you have so much freedom I think a lot of salon owners like feel that like a sense of ownership over their stylists and they feel that like any money that their stylists make they should get like benefits off of which I don't feel that way at all I let my stylists go and do side work they can work at another salon I really honestly do not care as long as they're focused in 100 percent you know into working while they're at my salon mm -hmm. we have a commission salon with the freedoms of rental what mm -hmm. are some of the other freedoms that you love about our salon that keeps you wanting to stay working for me so I can make my own prices if I want. I feel like me and you, we always come up with a game plan. So that's awesome. I feel like you don't have to like pass like a certain level to make your price. And you can take off whenever you want when it's appropriate, obviously. Like I don't do that. I feel like I'm married to the sun lately. But it's nice. You can make your own hours, essentially. I feel like, again, like I rent, but then have like the support system of like a commission sun. So yeah, it's nice. We supply everything for you. And we... I, I feel like it's more of a collaboration than it is essentially employment. Like you and I collab all the time on things. Like we bounce ideas off of each other. I ask you your, you know, advice on certain things when it comes to like implementing certain things in the salon or bringing on certain things because you are one of the mentors and we, you know, we do have that sort of like collaborative relationship. I think too, another thing that is something that I've worked on a lot is I don't micromanage you. I really don't. And I also think, and you can tell me what you think about this, but like the opportunity for growth when it comes to helping others, like you're such a good mentor to the other girls. And that is something that like, I hope that you enjoy doing. How do you feel about that part of working for, for me? Yeah. yeah. I feel like I was able to build so fast because I had you as a mentor. And I feel like, honestly, like I probably would have ended up working at like more of like a corporate salon if like I didn't have that just like for me like I feel like I need to like watch and learn from someone so like I try to build the other girls based off of how you did for me like when I'm busy like just giving them like my clients and helping them like build a relationship like that and again like just doing like the same experience and like pushing them to like kind of build how I built again like everyone's like journey is different so like they're not going to like maybe build how I did but I just feel like it was so like beneficial the way that like we did it. So kind of just helping them like in that way. So this is going to be a question for the stylists who are working on building or salon owners who are trying to help their stylists create their clientele. Can we talk about how you found success with social media and how you attribute that to the growth of your business? Because I feel like you were so consistent and that was one of the things that really helped you build at a rapid rate. Yeah, so I feel like now, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like a lot of the times, like, people are coming to a new salon more for, like, the stylist or, like, what they see on social media. So I feel like it's really important, even if you're fully booked, to kind of still post and have, like, that relationship with your followers. Because, like, again, like, I would never just pick some random salon to go to for, like, any other services. I would probably find, like, the stylist and I would be watching them for probably X amount of months or, like, a year. Like, you always say that, too. Like, people watch you for, like, so long. So I just think that's how it is now. And I feel like when you're actually, like, talking, like, on a story or a video, like, people feel comfortable to see you rather than just seeing, like, a picture of hair. And I feel like that's how we kind of built my books by doing lives and talking on stories because people, like, just feel so much more comfortable seeing you after that. Yeah, that is something that was really impactful. So last part of today's podcast, what is one piece of advice you would give to salon owners from a stylist perspective to have long lasting relationships with their stylist and to help with stylist retention? I just think having your own form of like stylist freedom in your like your commission salon, because I like want to grow and have some of my own things, but I also want to be a part of a salon. 
So I think just coming up with like a good system to like let your stylist do some things like on their own, but like still be a part of the salon. I think that's really like the way because I feel like I'm growing in like a sense where I'm doing things like on my own, but like I'm still like tied like to opulent, if that makes sense. I love that. Okay. Now where can people find you on social? I'm big on my Instagram right now. And that is Salon. Perfect. And thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for tuning in to the Elevate podcast. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a review on Apple Podcast or wherever you listen. The Elevate podcast is hosted by me, Patricia Nowakowski, and is produced by Opulent Beauty Pro. To receive my free business guides, visit opulentbeautypro.com backslash free or click the link in the show notes. You can find me on Instagram at Opulent Beauty Pro or at Patricia underscore Nowakowski underscore OBS. If you love this show, please consider subscribing and we will see you next week.